Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this tutorial I'm going to show how to use Eclipse with Git in order to make some changes. We're going to do this using some branches, and we're going to end up using two branches at once to kind of simulate a more realistic workflow. Okay, so you followed the previous tutorials, you've already got a project checked out, it's already set up with Eclipse or with Git, and you've got the Git repository already set up. We've got our master branch, that's a local branch, and we've got a remote tracking branch, meaning that the mas local master tracks the remote master. So anytime I do a push to my, uh, if I go into here and I said I want to push changes to upstream, it's going to push it up to the master. So that's the setup you've got. You can look in your history, maybe you've got a much more complicated history than this, but there's been some changes already. Let's see, okay, so we want to make a change. Inside of my demo application here, I've got my main function. What it does is it creates a data object for my sales data. It's just something I created. Let's have a look at what that is. When I call it here, let me go into that. My sales data simply has an array of some data, and then I'm going to call display on it here. So let's actually make a few changes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to implement this display function, and I'm going to make it actually display it out to the screen. But let's imagine when we're partway through, we're going to get interrupted by some high priority task. Let's walk it through. So to begin with, what I need to do is I need to create a branch, a local branch. So I'm going to right click on my master, the local master, and I'm going to say I want to create branch. So I pick a name for it. This should be a descriptive name, something that I think is going to describe the change that I'm going to make. Let's call it display data. And uh, you're creating a branch on the local branch. Sounds good. Pull strategy, well, I'm just pulling so I don't need any strategy at the moment. Okay, so now over here on the left we see I've got master and I've got display data. And we see there's a little check mark here on the left saying that this is the current branch I'm on. I can click on any one of these branches to start working on it. But I'm just going to stay on this display data branch because that's what I really want to do. So I'm going to go into my sales data object and I'm going to start to edit this file. So for int i equals zero, i less than data dot length, i plus plus. Of course, we should probably use the three part for or the uh, single part for loop, but that's fine. System dot out dot print line. And imagine at this point in our lives, the CEO of the company runs through the door and says, wait, stop. We've got to fix the output of this program. If we look at the output of this program, we note that we've got these capital letters. That's terrible. The CEO says that's atrocious. High priority task, this needs to be fixed. We need to fix the case on that. Great. Well, we could say to him, look, I'm partway through this one change. I want you to wait until I'm done. That's not going to fly with the CEO. So we say, well, that's fine. I can adapt. Now, before I switch off this, I need to make a commit. So I'm going to make a kind of a temporary commit. So I'm going to say here, I'm going to commit my changes. And I'm going to say, well, let's say, uh, so partial uh, implementation of displaying the numbers. And I'm going to commit the file. So I'm going to commit that in. I'm not going to push it, I'm just committing it in. So here we go. It's now got the latest um, commit done on that. Now we know that this hash code is different now for my local branch on display data to my local branch on display master. But these masters agree. So this hash code tells me what was the last change that happened. It's not like a sequence number. It's not an in order number. It's a hash uh, because there's no notion of what followed what. Now I'm going to do the same process I did before. I'm going to create a new branch. So I'm going to write click on the master, and I'm going to create a branch from the master. So let's call this fix caps. So I go to my fix caps branch, and we see here all those changes we just made are gone. Well, why? Because we based it on the master, and the master is out of sync. Let's back at our history. So if we look at my history, let me stretch that up here. We can see, if I go to master, the master is pointed to this. If I go to display data, we see here display data is one step ahead of us. 
So both the master and fixed cap are pointed back here at this previous change. So if I go back to fixed caps, those things aren't there. And that's fine, we don't need them. What we're really worried about is this main function. So under main, I'm going to just say hello, happy salespeople. This app shows sales data. And let's make it a bit snazzier. Oops. I'm going to add in a line here that makes it look like it's got a divider. OK, so that's exactly what the CEO wanted. They said, great, that needs to be deployed right away. OK, so how do we do that? Well, first we have to check it in. So I'm going to check in. And we're going to say fixed case on initial greeting display. Again, I want to describe what's been done. So I'm going to commit that. So now this has been committed. If I go here and I refresh, and this should be showing me a different one. So we get the master is pulled up on that. C7, it's not actually showing me there. So what I want to do now is I want to somehow deploy this. Now if I go back to the master here, the case is still terrible. And if I go to the deployed master on the remote, it's still also terrible. <clears throat> so the first step is I'm going to merge my changes here from fixed caps, this branch. I need to merge it back onto my master, my local master. After I've done that, I'm going to push that to the server. So I'll go to my master. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on what I want to merge with. So I right click on my fixed cap and I'm going to say merge. And so now it tells me, well, what are the changes that are going to happen? And here we have the fixed uh, case. I go OK and because there's no conflicting changes, it's simply going to accept it and it's going to roll it forward. And we can see here it worked because the hash codes are the same. That's great. Now I can push this up so I can right click and let's go this way. Push. Configure it. Yes, I want to push that up, just all the usual settings. And it's now going to push it up to the remote. It tells me what's going to happen. I want to fix the case on the initial greetings. That's right. Uh, that's the change I wanted. And we'll see here that the remote is now at the same hash code as we are. If I go to it, it's got the changes there. And if I go online, back through my browser, hit F5, we'll see here that we fixed the case on the initial greetings. And if I actually walk into here, source, into my main function file, we've got this changes here. So that's great. The CEO is now happy. Anybody else that's working on the code is getting the latest and greatest without having a uh, the case scream at them. Okay, so now we did that. That's great. Let's go back and work on the change we were working on before. Well, where is it? Well, it's under display data. So back here we see that this code is the same. Well, that's fine. We don't want to fix that bug now. That's not our problem. We're going to go back and work on this. So I want to finish this off. So I'm going to display next value. And we're going to display data sub i. Concatenating it out. So now if I run this, we see here it's still cases up here, and we now display the data. Let's put in a header. Fantastic. Let's say we're done. Maybe there's a more extensive change in this, but that's fine for our demo. Now what do I do? Well, I want to put it back onto the server. How do I do that? Well, the same thing as before. I switch to my master. It says, wait, you can't do that. Why? The files shown before have been uncommitted changes and would be lost if you switch to the master. Ah, okay. That's right. I didn't commit the change. That's the first thing I want to do. So I'm going to click commit. It'll actually go through the commit process for me. So I'm going to say here, uh, completed displaying uh, 
data in a sales data object. And I'll say commit. So now it looks like the change is lost, but it's not really lost because I've actually just switched down here. We see that master's last head is this hash code, whereas I'm on a different hash code, meaning my commits are on a different level. So I've got them here. If I go to history, I can see what's going on a bit better. Now what I want to do is I want to take this change and I want to merge it onto master. So I'll go to master here and I'm going to right click on my uh, the one to merge in and I'm going to say merge. So what's going to happen? Well, it's going to merge the changes and we can see down here that this display is updated. We'll talk about this display down here a bit more. It tells me the change that's been merged. I'll click OK. There were no conflicts in these two merges. I was editing two different files in two different, in different places, so no, cha no conflicts are possible. Another video, we'll see the comments below for a link on where to find them, will describe how to merge conflicting changes. So now when I go to the master build, which I'm on, if I look at what's going on, I have my complete dump, the piece of work I was working on now, and if I go back to my main, we see that we actually have the correct data that, or the um, correct display that the CEO absolutely wanted. But I've not pushed my newest changes up to the server. You can see here that the hash code here is CB8 such and such, and here we're back at A7B. Again, the actual numbers are irrelevant, it's the just the code. So now I can push it up. fastest way is to click the push changes to upstream. You can also go down here and find your upstream link. I can right click it and say push. and it'll push the configured changes. I'll accept that. And now it's pushed it up. We can see here that the master on the um, server is now the same as my master locally. If I were to go back to my web browser, I'd notice that. Any of my team that's updating, we get the latest changes that have been pushed in. Now, what's going on here is we've simply created a couple branches. Git does automatic merges, it manages everything for me, so branches and merges are very easy. These were non-conflicting, so that was much easier in fact still. So we can see what happened. Well, I had a version back here. This added the second output. And then I created a second branch going off to the left. And we can see here, we, the first check-in was a partial implementation of displaying the numbers. The next check-in on that branch was a completed the display of the sales data object. So that was one branch. Coming up the other line, I fixed the case on the initial greetings. And so that was important. We did that and checked that in. Then afterwards, what we did is we merged the two together. And so when I merged these two together, I get this one check in here. And it merged the previous ones. So we can see down here in the display data, it's parent. It has two parent check-ins, the full hash code displayed here. And that was the merge that allowed me to merge the two. Ah. I pushed that up to the server, and that allowed me to be on the same revision. Now I've got these two different branches here. Well, fixed caps, you note here, is at A7B such and such. So here's my A7B ID, and fixed cap. This green thing is the head, or the, um, the branch tag, effectively stating which um, check-in is this branch pointed at? We can see here that display data is pointed here. Now I could go through and update these. Um, for the moment, that's not really necessary, though. I'm not going to continue working on the display data or the, cap, or the fixed cap branches. These are old relics of what was happened in the past. So whenever I don't need a branch anymore, I'm going to delete it. It's not going to delete the changes, it's simply deleting this little green listing here, as in, where's this branch? What's the head of this branch? And it removes it from these lists here. If it's something I want to keep, well, I'll just leave it around, maybe I'll do more work on it, but I don't really care for this, so I'm going to delete the branch. And this is really, really fast and cheap. This turns out to be a 41 byte file, I think, on my local machine. Nothing changed on the server because all of these branches were local. All of my changes go into master, and then master gets pushed up to the server. I'm always pushing up complete changes to my master. We'll see in another demo on how to merge 
changes from the remote system onto my local copy before pushing up changes, plus we'll look at how to merge conflicts. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.